Hi, I'm Magda, and I'm the CEO and the co-founder of InterDNA. I'm actually also one of the co-inventors of Stride Technology that I would like to tell you more about today. Stride is the platform for of the DNA damage assays. Um, it's the sensitive technology for DNA breaks detection. So Stride abbreviation stands for Sensitive Recognition of Individual DNA Ends, and this is basically what the technology does. It's a fluorescence-based platform technology for direct detection and labeling of open free DNA ends that may occur at the sites of DNA breaks of different types, like single or double strand DNA breaks, uh, or actually at the sites of DNA fragments as well. Stride is direct, it's quantitative, it's compatible, sensitive, and specific. Um, by the fact that Stride is direct, we mean that the technology directly detects free DNA ends in situ. So in the first place, it doesn't require the extraction of DNA from the nucleus or the disturbance of a cell structure. Um, it also does not need to rely or depend on uh, the active repair mechanism. So it doesn't depend on the recruitment of repair proteins uh, to the sites of DNA damage, which makes it even a more powerful tool, especially if you're analyzing tumor cells or tumor tissues where you've very often um, have multiple different uh, DNA damage repair deficiencies or alterations. Um, Stride is a sensitive method, so um, its sensitivity level may reach uh, the detection of individual single or double strand DNA breaks. Uh, it has been proven experimentally and we have very high level of confidence at InterDNA that the assays that we've been uh, developing, they're capable of detecting uh, individual SSBs or DSBs, individual DNA ends inside the biological material. It is also specific, so it allows for selective and very specific detection of single, double, or repair protein-associated DNA breaks. And that is actually possible um, because we've developed multiple different solutions based on the, on the, on the platform. Um, the signals appear in a very form of a very bright foci. You can probably see it um, in the image, um, in the image uh, that is presenting on the left side of this slide. Uh, those bright fluorescent foci in this particular example represented in red, uh, they, they are actually um, presenting individual DSBs, DNA breaks. Um, and you can tell by looking at this image that the background is actually very close to zero. So you get a very good signal to noise ratio. And that actually makes this technology very easy to quantify uh, the signals, to literally quantify the DNA damage. So the approach that we're offering at InterDNA is a quantitative method um, that is possible because of the application of automated and objective quantification of fluorescent foci uh, by using our in-house built AI algorithms. And finally, Stride is compatible. Uh, it can be applicable with various types of biological material, including patient-derived tissue samples uh, like tumor biopsies or liquid biopsies. Um, there are actually no limitations. You can use it both for frozen FFP biological material. I'll be uh, showing some examples in a second. So actually the question comes, how it, does it work, right? Um, first, I would like to introduce you maybe to one of our solutions called d -stride assay. And uh, by presenting d -stride, actually present the principles of the stride technology at the same time. d -stride, uh, assay forms bright foci directly at the sites of double strand DNA breaks. Um, and if a double strand DNA break is detected, what we do at InterDNA, the first step uh, of the method um, is an enzymatic reaction uh, in which we're using the terminal transferase to detect, specifically detect and modify the DNA ends, uh, three prime OH DNA ends, by the incorporation of analogs of nucleosides to those DNA ends. In the following step, those modifications, um, which are the extensions, the, the, the chains of analogs of nucleotides are detected uh, with um, by a combination of two primary antibodies uh, that are binding close, that need to bind close to each other. 
and then they can be followed by secondary antibodies conjugated to oligonucleotides. Those oligos may be then ligated, and in the final stage, we're applying rolling circle amplification. Uh, that is that step is actually responsible for the creation, production of a fluorescent signal, and the amplification of that signal at the same time. So another variant um, of such, I would say, flagship assays that have been developed at InterDNA is stride, S stride assay. S stride assay forms bright foci directly at the sites of single strand DNA breaks, such as NICs or GAPs. And um, the, the steps of the method are, I would say, very similar, um, very comparable to, to the D stride assay with one difference, which is the enzymatic, initial enzymatic reaction that in this case is actually um, based on the, the reaction and that is involving polymerase 1 protein uh, responsible for the detection and modification of 3' OH DNA ends. So stride assays, they allow for the detection of DNA breaks on the level of a single cell. So here you're looking at 3D images. Uh, these are This is an image of a single sample. But you can see those bright foci labeled in red that are labeling double strand DNA breaks localized inside the nuclei. Nuclei are labeled with DAPI, presented, um, represented here in a blue color. Um, we acquire those images in three dimensions. So we apply confocal microscopy in order to increase the level of, I would say, accuracy and granularity of, of the results. Um, this method actually allows for both the detection of endogenous DNA breaks due to its high level and precedented level of sensitivity, as well as uh, DNA breaks that are induced by multiple different DNA damaging agents. And uh, this slide is actually showing two, two different examples, um, a nucleus of, uh, of a cell that is acquired from a sample that hasn't been treated with any DNA damaging agents. You can see it on the left side of the slide. And um, you know, the, the, that's showing the lower level of, of the signals, um, fewer foci detectable inside the nucleus, especially if we compare it to uh, the nucleus that is presented on the right side of the slide, uh, which is a nucleus of a cell um, from a sample that was treated with an alkylating agent uh, responsible for the DNA damage induction. Um, and by comparing, you know, the patterns that we're seeing in the red channel uh, in both images, you can very immediately uh, tell that uh, we we do see the difference, then there is some significant increase in the number of foci in the sample that was treated with a DNA damaging agent. So as I've mentioned, uh, stride assay is compatible. It can be used in any type of, of, of biological material. But what is also pretty important is that it is a pretty versatile method. So you can combine it with other markers as well. And if you do the stride analysis, you want to do the analysis of DNA breaks, you can actually combine it, multiplex it with um, other types of markers um, that will allow detection of different types of proteins, different types of structures. Um, here's one of the examples of, I would say, very common applications uh, that we um, we use at InterDNA. Um, it's the 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 multiple like the the counter staining of proteins responsible for, for example, um, the cell cycle progression or the cell cycle signaling. In this case, we're comparing two different cells that are in different phases of cell cycle, and in order to detect replicating S phase cells, we applied uh, immunofluorescent staining of PCNA represented in green in this image, uh, and you can see here two nuclei. One nucleus is of a cell that is a non-S phase, non-replicating cell, probably, most probably G1 phase cell, uh, that is we cannot see any um, PCNA characteristic PCNA patterns inside the nucleus, whereas the second one um, is a nucleus of a replicating S phase cell uh, where PCNA um, created very I'd say distinct patterns um, presented here in green color. Um, those patterns represent replica replication factories um, inside the, the cell nucleus. It is 
Very important, especially in the context of the application of this technology to, for example, assess the biology um, of different targets in the context of targeted therapeutics and development in oncology. Uh, but also to, for example, reveal mechanisms of action of different drugs, such as next generation targeted therapies and uh, targeted therapeutics, such as, for example, DDR inhibitors. So how do we do the analysis? Because um, it's not just the method, it's not just the protocol that is uh, performed in the lab. Uh, it's also a um, set of tools that have been developed at InterDNA. Uh, tools that allow objective analysis uh, of images, quantitative analysis of images, uh, so that um, at the very end of the experiment of the study, we obtain um, the, the result, the final outcome are the, the graphs, actually the numbers that are representing the biology. So how does it work? Uh, in the first step, we apply um, the obviously the imaging approach and we use confocal microscopy as the imaging platform to, uh, to acquire 3D confocal images. Those images are the raw data that are an input for the algorithms. Uh, and in the first step, the algorithms are applying um, AI tools for automated detection and recognition of, of objects in the images. In this case, we're interested in uh, recognizing nuclei in an automated manner. Uh, and those algorithms are responsible for um, the creation of 3D masks uh, that actually overlap the DAPI signals. Uh, then in the following step, um, the same algorithm is detecting the foci. So it's responsible for very accurate labeling of foci inside the nuclei so that the final outcome of the algorithm, algorithmic analysis is the number of SSB or DSB foci, which is single strand DNA breaks or double strand DNA breaks foci per single nucleus. Uh, we acquire thousands of nuclei per sample, and that way you can actually extrapolate the information from, from a single nucleus to the entire population of the cells in a sample. As I've mentioned, you can multiplex stride with different markers. In this case, we're showing an example of the multiplication um, uh, on the combination of stride with the gamma H2AX um, sig analysis. Gamma H2AX is a known marker um, used for the detection of, of signaling that is um, to a certain extent linked uh, with uh, the response to double strand DNA breaks occurrence. It's rather a cellular stress marker. And uh, in this case, we used um, our tools to measure the level of expression of phosphorylated version of histone H2AX um, in order to, um, to actually look at the level of, 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 of cellular stress that would accompany, accompany DNA damage and measured with stride assay. And both, both, uh, both results could be easily quantified and presented in the form of, of graphs. So where can you apply stride assays? Um, it can be, you know, you can apply the assays in any type of biological material. You can use it for fixed cultured cells and cells in suspension. Uh, it can be used in blood cells and CTCs, um, but also you can use it in um, frozen and FFP tissue sections. And here is actually one of the examples of images obtained uh, from a patient derived tumor biopsy. Um, it was actually to be more uh, precise. It was in ovarian cancer metastatic tissue. Uh, it was metastasis to breast. And in this case, we uh, multiplex stripes presented again in red uh, with obviously DAPI staining to identify the nuclei, but also to with the pan CK staining to identify the tumor cells inside the, the sample. So, um, I would like to maybe um, highlight a little bit uh, some examples of the applications of the stride assays. Um, so there are multiple different examples that have already been published in scientific papers. I would like to list some of them. Um, and, um, you know, you can find some data obtained with stride in the papers um, the focusing on the analysis of 
MOA or PD effects of next generation therapeutics, such as new generation alkylating agents. Um, there were two papers in 2023 or 2024 that presented data obtained with destrite assays. Um, another example of the application of, of in this case, estride uh, for site quantification um, that was published in 2022 um, in a paper describing a novel USP1 inhibitor. Um, another example of a research um, paper publication in which stride was used to measure and quantify the numbers of breaks that may occur in chromosome bridges. Uh, this paper was published in 2021. And finally, the paper published in the same year uh, where stride was used to detect DNA fragments in the context of PARP7 inhibitors um, evaluation. So in general, the platform is currently used um, mostly for the validation um, and evaluation of novel therapeutics or novel types of therapies that are developed in oncology space. Um, and it's become sort of a personalized medicine enabler. Um, it can be used at very early stage of target validation or the compound screening, lead selection and evaluation studies. Um, it is very commonly used for the assessment of mechanism of action in cells and in tissue samples, uh, but it can also serve as a PD biomarker, pharmacodynamic biomarker, uh, at the stage of translational studies or even in early stage clinical trials. We're also currently working right now on the development of a panel of functional uh, predictive biomarkers uh, that could be used in the future also for patient selections, but that should be probably a separate subject to cover in a sep separate, um, um, in a separate um, clip. So thanks a lot for your attention. And if you've got any questions, um, reach out directly to me or contact us at contact at intodna.com. Uh, I also strongly encourage you to visit our website to learn more about the essays and potential applications um, at intodna.com.